So we get to hear say some man, some man of man say that Erasta a make Selassie I God. And we say no Rasta make Hale Selassie God. First of all, first and foremost, right there, there, there. Just would hope that ones and wish ones could read what I've read, you know, see what I've seen, heard what I've heard, you know. Maybe even for a little time be in my head, just just to get the perspective of where, you know, we are coming from objectively speaking. First of all, subjective, you know, subjectively a person can say, well, to I I see it like this. Okay, but I'm gonna share some facts that hopefully will prove that it was not Rasta, as some man of mine say that Rasta make Selassie God, that it was not Rasta that makes Selassie God. Just as a little segue right here at the very beginning, some of y'all may have um, seen, no doubt, the um, or heard, rather, it's an it's a audio, but you might have seen like a video of the Lutheran interview. I think there's a Lutheran interview, and there's also the Royal Canada interview, the Royal Canada, aboard the Royal Canada train interview of His Majesty, where he speaks about um, emanation philosophy basically is creation versus emanation right man was created in the image after the likeness man did not just emanate you know like evolve so to speak in the way that it has been presented to us by you know white anglo-saxon protestant science you know because there's white anglo-saxon protestant counterfeit christianity and there's also their their science that has some true things and then they spin some racist pseudo things into their so-called scientific things right however in thinking about that right there for for just a just a just a quick uh, quick 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 moment right here when you hear that, there's a part in that audio aboard the Royal Canada train, and it said, despite this clear declaration, millions of Ethiopians, you know, still still regard His Majesty as like the return Messiah, you know, or at least hold him in, I think, high esteem in some wise. I don't have that speech, not speech, but I'm going to have that um, audio right here. But we will bring it up because it says, despite this clear declaration, still millions, right? It says, still millions of Ethiopians regard Haile Selassie I as the returned, you know, Messiah, or in that Christological Christ Messiah revelation sense. Now, that's how it was even at the beginning. How do we know this? Because what we have read and studied, such as the liturgy, Right. What well, we have read and studied the teaching of his majesty, what well, we have read and studied the Ethiopian manuscripts of the church. Right. Both in the translation and comparing many of the original, whether Amharic or the Gutis the text. That's what we have to study to shoe ourselves approve. And there's much that has been translated, but there's so much that has not been translated, even when we speak about selective speeches. There's something known as Frey Kanafer. Frey. Frey is fruit Kanafer. Kanafer is the good is for lips. So like fruit of the lips. It's basically the official um, speeches of his majesty in like two volumes. I know there's two volumes that I have. Both of them are in Amharic. Right? Two volumes. Some of the speeches, I know them based on the translation, like selected, selected speeches and other speeches that are known speeches that have been translated officially and also have been publicized elsewhere. But there are sections of the Frey Kanafer, Fruit of the Lips, which is the official royal Amharic speeches of His Majesty, sayings of His Majesty, important, you could say, important utterances. Right. And there's a few of them that I had to say, wow, this is what the Ethiopians at that time. This is what they thought. This is how they saw it. This is this is messianic indeed. So that that further proved to me that even aboard the Royal Canada train. Now, the interviewer says, despite this clear declaration, but in that particular audio of his imperial majesty, he said, yes, I've heard of this. I've also spoken to certain Rastafarians that made it very, uh, you know, clear or plain to them that I am a man, I am mortal, I'll be replaced by the oncoming generation. They should never pretend or assume that man is emanated from a deity, right? That man is emanated from a deity. Now, stop for a moment. Uh, some of the brothers and sisters might be familiar because we've reasoned on this, asking the 
key questions. What is emanation? What is emanation? Nobody asked that. People say, oh, he denied being Christ. He, he said he's not God. He's not Christ. But nowhere was in that particular audio aboard the Royal Canada train. You know, when they asked him about him being the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, and he says, I've heard about this idea. I've also spoken to many Rastafarians. I made it very clear to them. Now, when you say you heard of this idea, he didn't, he didn't comment. He didn't say, well, I'm, 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 I'm not Christ. I'm, I'm not anointed. I'm, I'm not, there's no divinity with me. So that, would, that would be contrary to the true Orthodox faith. See, people don't even understand when they talk about Orthodox, Tawahido, because a lot of things get lost in translation. Much things get, enough things get lost in translation. Thankfully, you know, the elders, the patriarchs, matriarchs, right, in the first proclamation of Rastafari, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, he is the first, right? Hala Selassie, the first is the first Rastafari. He is the first Rastafari. Rasta may be Jamaican, but Rastafari is Ethiopian, Ethiopian Hebrew, if we have to be a little bit more clear. But still, once again, no Rasta. Right? No Rasta make Selassie God. Now, subjectively, ones like Muta or perhaps a few others might believe that from their own subjective perspective, their own subjective perspective. But objectively speaking, we're going to prove to you that the divinity, when we speak about the divinity, see, in speaking about the divinity of his majesty, I've heard another brother also speak about um, the Godhead. You know about the Godhead. He shared that, well, his majesty is the Godhead, but not God. So there's these reasoning. Is he, is he God? Is he the Godhead? Is he Christ? Is he the reincarnated Christ? What does emanation philosophy mean? See, this is where the scripts, the glory of his majesty, the B-I-B-L-E says, to study, to shew ourselves approved. Because you can't even really know what his majesty meant by the Royal Canada train until you define what is he speaking about emanation philosophy, right? Emanation, because when we speak about divinity, right, there's, there's two main perspectives of divinity, of the divine divinity, right? There's the true way of the scripture, right? And then there is the astray way, everything that's opposite of the truth. So emanation philosophy Right, what his majesty speaks against and he warns the Rastafari is this counterfeit spirituality, this this the Antichrist philosophy that says that creation does not have a creator, that man was not created, man was emanated. What's the verb? The verb is created. Let us and made, right? Let us make man in our image. Now, here was some mod, some mod mind saying, Oh, Rasta make Selassie God. We make him. What? Excuse me? Is, isn't it bad enough you abbreviate the glory to Rasta instead of Rastafari? See, because then you can say that the next man is the first Rasta to imply that someone was before Rastafari. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That someone was before Rastafari. So this is a lack of education, a lack of diligence, and a lot of of lies that people have told over and over and over again. It's not the Rasta or Rastafari that make so-called Selassie God. You know what really makes, in that sense, or brings out, we could say, the divinity and makes the connection? It is the teaching, right, of the true faith. It's the true teaching. Some might say Orthodox, we'll say Tawahido. And we say Tawahido according to the scripture, the Bible, and according to the manuscripts, the Ethiopian manuscripts, according to the true teaching, the true church in the professing Ethiopian Tawahido church recognized from the very beginning, right? You can say the very beginning, even before the very beginning, when we say the beginning, we're pointing to November 2nd, so to speak, you know, where Rastafari, King Negus Tafari, Negus Rastafari became Edomah or revealed, revealed upon the throne of David because he already had that name, but that name was not known until it was revealed as the Kedamawi Haile Selassie Kedamawi, the first, right, to say the first of that which goes before, right, the power of the Trinity, the first power of the Trinity. So when we look at the Trinity according to Christianity, the Trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is it not? So what 
would be the first power of the Trinity be according to to the Bible, because his majesty, Haile Selassie says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So based on the Bible, both in his translation, but moreover in the Royal Amharic, we refer to the Royal Amharic, also to the Hebrew scripture, the linguistics. But here in the basic translation, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, basically defined, whether we say it in Amharic, whether we say it in Hebrew, it basically comes down to the same basic principle of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right. Father, son. Ho so who would the first power be? Right. Who would the first power of the Trinity be? According to the Bible, it would be and he would be the father, the person of the father. Right. The person of the Ababa John Hoy. He is the father. Right. The first power of the Trinity. Right. Now, let's bring this up right here because we only just touch on a few things right here. And also we heard another um, error, um, 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 lie. I don't know if it lie, lie, lie. Sometimes we say somebody lie. It almost like it implies intent. Don't really know one's intent. But basically wrong saying that which is wrong, that which is not factual. Some say that. Is, is the, the Ethiopian church never recognized his majesty divinity. That's what some say. The, the, the apostate church, the fallen away church, the church since the godless and creeping coup have a lot of problems. The church since the time of 1974-75 has had a lot of problems, a lot of challenges, and still has its challenges. And hopefully the true church and the professing church will overcome these things too. These will pass as well. Right, within what's happening presently in the church. But we've heard, I think, Muta Baruka say it wasn't a church. Like, it's not the church. The church denied such and such. The church denied later on, but or, uh, initially, in the beginning, right, the church denies nowadays, by and large, the Orthodox church denies because of what has happened. See, we have to recognize that what happened with the godless and creeping coup. Uh, what creeps, right? Godless and creeping coup, the serpent, that, that old serpent. Revelation should have warned you, right, for what would happen even after that manifestation. Does not the Bible says in his times he shall shew in his times. That means that does the Messiah have time? Yeah, he has time to show and prove. And in his majesty's time, he has shown and proven. You see, that's biblical. That's scriptural. That part is fulfilled. So if we know the scripture, if we truly study to show ourselves approved, yes, we have to we have to get all this whitewash or this counterfeit Christianity out of our heads. And, and this this is this is the main problem for a lot of even these so-called rosters, right? A lot of them, right? Especially the ones that are talk, talk, talk and stuff like, well, it's the rasta that makes Selassie God. How you how you say that? Have you read the liturgy? The coronation liturgy, what was said when his majesty was anointed? See, his majesty was crowned, her majesty was crowned. But the difference is that his majesty was anointed, anointed. Do you know what anointed means? He Hebraically, according to the true roots of the king of kings, that anointed is that Messiah-ing, Mashiach. Mashiach is anointed, Mashacha, Mashacha, right, is to anoint, to anoint with oil. According to those ancient precepts, you know, the roots of Ethiopia, the Judeo-Christian roots of Ethiopia going back some 3,000 to 36 plus hundred years ago. I mean, these are facts. The Israelites of Ethiopia, right? So that link with the Israelites, right? The Israelites and Ethiopians. We're speaking about black, melanated, black and brown people. Let's just note that by and large, we're speaking about black peoples here. Right? We talk about the Israelites, Ethiopian, the Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews. So if we look at it from the true context that the faithful Ethiopians, especially those of the first generation, right? His majesty went through various different generations to say different, for example, we look at from 1930, right, to like 1975. There were different administrations, like different prime ministers, different governments, right, that represented Ethiopia at home and the Ethiopian at home and abroad in Kanamawi Haile Selassie's name. And only when we get to the last generation, right, only when we get to the last generation, it's like coming to the last of the seven churches in Revelation, Laodicea, 
judgment, right, of the people, judgment to the people, the lukewarmness. We get this lukewarmness. Have you noticed the seven churches that were in Asia, according to Revelation? The last church is a lukewarm church, right? And what does red letter, red letter say in the Bible? The red letters say in the Bible, and because you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. You, it's better if you were hot or it's better if you were cold. And this message is to the Rastafari, right? Because many ones are lukewarm, right? Or lukewarm on Rastafari and lukewarm on the teaching of his majesty. It's like they're trying to merge the Babylonian Christianity teachings, right? In with this knowledge of Haile Selassie and this knowledge of Ethiopia trying to superimpose Western Gentile, the different denomination, demon denominations of counterfeit Christianity. And what we found is that by and large, counterfeit Christianity or white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity, their doctrines, their main beliefs differ diametrically, directly, almost some things 180 degrees opposite Right, of our true, you say, Tawahido Israelite and Tawahido of Ethiopia, the Israelite of Ethi Ethiopian Hebrew, the royal order, differ from the royal order of Ethiopian Hebrews. Right? So I'm not speaking from a so called Jamaican perspective as a Ras Tefari, as Ras Tefari, right? but I'm speaking as a Ras Tefari. I, from a Rastafari. So some might tell me about what they witnessed that went on in Jamaica at this time or that time. But as we say, Rasta may be Jamaican, but Rastafari is Ethiopia. Right? It's Ethiopian. Rastafari come from Ethiopia, as it says in the word, as a lightning shine from the east to the west. Where are we? Here in the Americas and the Caribbean, the Caribbean, we are here in the west. So as that lightning shine from the east, look to the east. Right, the Rastafari, the first of the Rastafari is Kadamawi Haile Selassie. And no Rasta make Selassie God. I mean, I mean, what are you saying? Chad. Right? That, that's a Western Gentile. That's a half original mind. Some of the nation, the gods and earths, no doubt remember. Right? The five percent of nation, gods and earth. You remember the half original? Half original. That's a half original way of thinking. They may think pro-black. They may think black revolutionary. But in their so-called, in their religious or their spirituality connected with the Bible mind, it's just like a black face. It's just like black face. It's like black face over the whitewash. Right. And, and this is how they perceive it. But they have not taken the time to really study. Right. And this is why the Rastafari movement is going through what it's going through presently it reminds me of what um, is said in in uh, what's it, Peter, about this this fiery trial. Right. There's a fiery trial. Right. Let's share this right here, here, here. And let's touch on this fiery trial right here, you know, to give you the scripts right here, the fiery trial right here. OK, take that out right there. Fiery trial right here. Let's put fiery fiery trial right there's a fiery trial going on fiery trial right let's see and fiery trial i'll take that right there go search right there first peter 4 and 12 beloved beloved think it not strange like seeing what's happened recently with the scots pass and and the whole stephanie marley on behalf of mother rita marley and the nyabingi order there and the eviction notice and the squatters rhetoric and this and that and then also the exposure of the abuses the rapes amongst a lot of wolves and sheep clothing and pedophilia and other we'll say immorality according to the teaching of his divine majesty Karamawi Hala Selassie right but that's why this verse is important right here beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery Right, in the Rastafari, we talk about fire, fire, hata, hata, fire. The what, what kind of trial? Not concerning the trial, right? The trial, right? But the fiery trial, the fiery trial, which is to try you as though something strange, as some strange thing, some strange thing, some strange thing happened to you. Mm. So, beloved, see, here's where the teaching of His Majesty is important because a lot of these. A lot of these guys and these Rasta, the ones who call themselves Rasta and have been repping, you know, in some cases it seemed as though there was it was it was it was good repping, right? In other cases it seemed as though it it was it was it was no good repping, 
but those who have been so-called rapping, you know, rapping Rastafari, you know, for all the time that they have been rapping Rastafari, a lot of them have totally neglected the teaching of his majesty. By and large, they have just totally neglected the teaching of his majesty because by this time, most of us as Rastafari, first of all, back in the days, one of the first songs that really inspired I and I, that helped with the inspiration and the call to even learn the, the language and that gift of the tongues, right, was hearing the tune, I think it was by Dillinger and... Um, was that Linville Thompson? I'm not too sure. I know Dillinger was Natty Dread learned the Amaric, and it called out all the mansions, mansions of Rastafari. We've been saying this for years that one of the mistakes was that ones and ones were calling it um, um, the mansions, right? We're calling the mansions houses, the, the, the this a house, the that a house. But yet the word, the Bible would have, see, if we had regard, the early Rastafari, the first proclaimers of Rastafari, they had regard for this Bible. And this is why we look at the historical movement of Rastafari. We see it to be different, right? greatly different than what we see going on today. Most of what we see going on today, hot to hot to fire, could, could, would not even be tolerated, would not be covered up, would not have been hushed up, would not have been tolerated by no means necessary. But when you begin to demoralize and confuse the people, as many of these ones have confused the people about the Bible, about the teaching of his majesty, saying, well, if his majesty is a Christian and he's my father, that don't mean that I got to be a Christian. Totally confusing the whole point of this calling and the new name Rastafari. That's why it says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened. Some strange thing happened to you, right? And then as we go through this right here, right? Let's go through this right here, right? And let's scroll down right here, um, right here. Okay, yeah, it says, boom, right here. Verse 17, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, at the house of Elohim, the house of Exiavia. We could say, for I and I at the house of Rastafari. And if it first begin at us, this is what's happening now. We see it first beginning. We see it in the black consciousness community, what's been going on since the polite thing, even before, but even much more after, and other things being exposed about different ones that have, you know, with pretense and pre, you know, pretending and pretense represent themselves at whatever that they were not getting exposed. Right? But now, judgment beginning, right? Judgment must begin at the house of God, at the house of the real power. We said the house of Jah, if you please. And if it first begin at us, at I and I, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Elohim, of Hailehim, of the power of Egeziabihar, of the sustainer, the true good, the true God. Now, the gospel of God, what is the gospel of Kadamawi Hala Salasi? You see? So Rastafari, right? The Rastafari did not make Hila Salasi the first God. The Rastafari, the ones that acknowledge the divinity, right? The divinity and the prophecy. Right? And the reality of his divine majesty based on the teaching of his divine It all begins with the teaching. How can we take his name right, and not represent him? I, I, I mean, how, how do you do that? You know, that's like identity theft. Right? Are we speaking about identity theft? Right in the house of Rastafari, ones who have taken the name and then try to bring in their own subjective opinions and philosophies, give us a teaching of his majesty. Does his majesty speak about the Bible? He says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So whose part is our part if our part is not right in the fullness of Kedemah, we have the Salah, as those of us who say we are Rastafari. And Rastafari, like I said, go beyond. Jamaica, Benjamin has a, an important role and had an important role and still has an important role to play in Rastafari. But we have to now look at Rastafari, right? Universally, we could say internationally, 
right, Rastafari, even up here in this North Country, many ones and ones want to say, well, like, treat us as though we're less Rastafari because we're not Benjamin or, or Jamaican. You see, that's the, those are the things, right? Those are, things have to be weeded out, right? It has to be cut and clear and rooted, has to be rooted up, right? This is why it's saying that the time is coming that judgment must begin right at our own house. So if it's any indication from what we have heard and seen so far, there's going to be a lot much more, right, that is going to be exposed. That's what it says, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Exaria, the gospel of Elohim, the gospel of John, the gospel of God, for I and I is Rastafari, the gospel of Rastafari, who speaks to us concerning his Christ, Yeshua HaMoshia, the Christ that he proclaims to us the Christ that he reveals, the Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christus, that he reveals to us. When he speaks about the Bible, we should recognize that he's not just speaking about the Bible. You know, there's some ones and ones that might go to, say, an Ethiopian priest or somebody and say, listen, here's an Amharic Bible, here's an English Bible. Are these both the same thing? And the priest, if he can read or understand, he might just tell you yes. But that's, 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 that's not you knowing the truth for yourself. You still are deep ending on one who's called a priest or whatnot. Haven't we been called to be a kingdom of the priesthood? So what in the world are we deep ending on other priests, especially from an order that had betrayed, right, our Godfather and King of Kings? Does not mean that we cannot be Orthodox or Tawahido. That is our inheritance. That's our divine heritage. But it means that we don't have to be following after men and people right, who still have to clear up their own uckery since the godless and creeping coup. But to say that the Ethiopian church never recognized divinity and the messiahship, right? We can say the divinity, you know, the God, you know, the God revelation in and through his majesty is a lie as Muta Baruka and maybe others want to pick up on that right there. Maybe that's his experience, but we're going to show you something right here just to bring it out even a little bit more. Brothers and sisters right here, let's just cue this up. Let's cue this up right here, here, here. Yeah, so, yeah, so we saw this right here. This is the still for one of the posts up there on, I think, the Muta Baruka YouTube link right here, and they say, no death before dishonor code. Mm. No death. They used to say death before dishonor, so they're saying that there's no death before dishonor code. Hmm. That's interesting because that's almost like biblical in a sense, right? That's like biblical. All right? Somebody can just say something about like death before dishonor or no death before dishonor, right? And then try to, you know, squat over the Bible, so to speak, right? And try to make it seem to be all the same thing. Right. If Ethiopia was under white man's Christianity, then Ethiopia would have had no power to withstand and to, you know, um, um, overcome. Right. Ethiopia would have had no power to overcome if Ethiopia was practicing. Right. See, see, see to a lot of the a lot of the fleshy, carnal minded ones, it may seem like, oh, Ethiopia was Christian and, and, and Italy and Mussolini and the Vatican and the Pope, they were Christian, you know, and they, and they, and they have the Mary pictures and stuff like, you know, people look at a lot of that outer stuff, right? And they try to make it seem as though similar is the same, right? Again, similar is not the same. What is similar? Similar is just similar. So this is one video right here, no death before dishonor code. But it's interesting how people will talk in these kind of like, it's like they want to wipe the Bible out the way. Someone to wipe the teaching of his majesty. The teaching of his majesty is clearly the Bible, right? If most of these ones and ones who are maybe old, olders, you know, a lot of them are olders nowadays. Maybe they are for some ones and ones elders, right? Respectfully speaking, they might be ones and ones elders. But for the most part, they're just olders, right? So now they have gotten older in this trial to rise to far eye, right? How have they really been able to benefit, right, the youths? That's what it's about. How are they able to benefit the youths, right? When we heard the tune, Nati Dread, Lundi, Amarik, and we started to learn Am Amharic, right? A few others of us started to learn Amharic back then, right? We started to try to encourage others to learn Amharic. By and by, right, especially social media is helping out a lot and there's a lot of other brothers and sisters who are studying and learning and even sharing, you know, whatever knowledge they have with others. So it, it, it's picking up, right? But definitely 
it seems as though there was no real encouragement from the majority of the elders. How many elders, how many of them even have anything Amharic in their tunes, in their songs? Think about it for a moment. Remember when we heard Peter Tosh? Peter Tosh had the tune, right? Bob Marley had some tunes that he was trying to do, like with another lyric, you know, um, Lego Shoon, Lego Shoon, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, I get him a nice or something like that. Um, the Peter Tosh did Exiavia. He did a tune at Xiavia. Now, Xiavia, um, simply put, as simply put as possible, that's like the Hashem, or that's the name, right, of, you could say, the God or the sustainer, right? And it's a seven-letter name. It's known in some of the Ethiopian ancient manuscripts as being the primordial name, right, of the Lord. That is to say, the primordial name of Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah. Jehovah, the primordial name, the name before the world, but it's known as the seven-letter name. So some in the Jewish or Yehudi and Hebrew studies may have come across something known as the seven-letter name, right, of, of, of Jehovah or, or Yahweh, right? And we find it out to be Exiavia, yes? So the teaching of His Majesty speaks about the Bible. It speaks about the Bible. Right? His Majesty speaks about the Bible, the significance of the Bible. Right? We see a whole historical testimony of a people with a Judeo, Judaic, you could say Hebrew and the Israelite link, as well as the true Nazarene and Christian calling from the very beginning, right? living out this thing that they call Christianity or the way of Christ and the belief in Christ, Jesus Christos, and showing good fruit, good fruit. Right? Good fruit, right? Through the time of his majesty up until the godless and creeping coup. And then after 74, 75, we see a 180, right? We see a 180, right? Within the church, right? So the teaching of his majesty. So no death before dishonor code. The scripture speaks about that, right? So who is to listen to? His majesty who speaks about the Bible and any errors that we have or any misconceptions this is what the Rastamans would say, come, make with reason, make with reason, right? This is also another one right here would say, he's not God, he's not Jesus Christ. But according to Tawahido, according to the ancient teaching of the true church and the professing church, the church of he who have the key of great King David, according to the true church and the true teaching, Judeo-Christian teaching, who is his majesty? That's the question we're asking. According to the true teaching, of the church, who is his majesty? The Ethiopians, right? The faithful Ethiopians from circa, we could say 1930 and from prior to that time, from 3000 years before that, right? Straight through the 30s, roughly around 1974, 75, right? The faithful generation, because there was a faithful generation, even though we see how things so-called ended up in 74, 75, we cannot ignore the faithful generation. Right. So there's a little bit more here, but let's let's bring up an exhibit. Of course, we want to get into a little bit of this here and and that there. And also I have to touch on this. I think it was his sister, actually, sister soldier. I just glanced at it. And I said, let me just grab this right here. Muda views on Rasta religion and God. Muda, you see the Bibles he have? He have all the Bibles back there. I don't see no Hebrew. I see no what they call what the Tanakh. Some call the the um the 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 Brit Yeshana. I don't see no Brit Chadasha. I see no Tanakh there. I see no the Metz of Kedus. I don't see the Metz of Kedus there. I don't even see some of the study materials that Lion of Judah Society LOJS produces to help our brothers and sisters get up their basic um, tools and comprehension so that they can learn these things for themselves. And then they love to keep pushing on ones this um this Kaiser Borgia. Without even saying that this is Caesar Borgia, right? This is Caesar Borgia, right? Caesar Borgia. Now, this image crept into Ethiopia, but it's very clear, right, that this image is not the image that Ethiopia over the 3,000 or 2,000, we say roughly of Christianity, 2,000 years recognized. Now, yes, you look today. If you look at Ethiopia today, you know what I mean? But then we look at Ethiopia yesterday during the time of his majesty. And let's look at which icons, iconography, 
because Ethiopia was a place where we used to say, many of I and I, coming out of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity, Ethiopia used to be the place we said, they have a black Christ, they have black Mary, they have black saints, they have black prophets, right? They have the black people of the Bible, right? Represented in their illuminated, you know, what they call illuminated manuscripts, the manuscripts with the art and the pictures and the paintings and everything like that. But here, 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 I'd like to show you this right here because to prove that it was not Rasta. And, and one love that Rasta. That Rasta is abbreviation. That Rasta thing is, the, the Rasta thing is a, is, is a byproduct, right? The true fruit is Rastafari. Again, Rasta is a byproduct. You buy product. Rasta this, Rasta that, Rasta. But Rastafari is the true fruit. That's the fullness of it. Man of man like this abbreviation, the abbreviation and deviation thing, right? You know, um, but them so free to them full, right? So this video right here, we're going to check out more of it, right? But just pointing that out, more to views on Rasta religion and God. Right? But give us the teaching of His Majesty Muta, right? Muta, right? Yeah, and then this one right here, Rasta them tricky Aya. I don't know what this one is about, right? This one is about. But you have to recognize that what we're seeing, what we're witnessing now, was something that was in process ever since the martyrdom that went on, especially against I and I Rastafari Joseph, but Hannah Selassie, aka. Robert Nesta Marley, Bob Marley, against Peter Tosh, remember September 11th, against so many others, Jacob Killer Miller, a lot of them, even if it seemed as though these things it were accidents, so to speak, right? We're in a spiritual, the spiritual warfare, right? Them tri spiritual warfare, right? Well, it's not about the deviation, right? Or the abbreviation. Let's get to the fuller full. Right, the full of full, rise the far eye, the fullness of it. So here, let's go right over here. I want to show you this right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Where is the oh it's at the top? Oh, Chan. I think we're gonna have to flip it around. Let's go right here. Okay. All right, okay, some some boiler pictures. Let's do this right here. Let's rotate this right here, rotate this to the left. All right, okay, this is to the left. Okay, and then let's get this next one. I want to show you these documents right here. All right, let's show you these documents, but let's rotate this to the left. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's go to the first one right here. First one right here, all right? Now, this is something that is called um, um, poem, a praise poem by a clergyman from St. Michael's Church at Tenta, all right, or Tenta. The Tenta, right? This is 1921 GC. G GC is Gregorian calendar, like the calendar that we have now, the Pope Gregory calendar. Yeah, Gregorian calendar, because we also have our own time telling, right? So this is from 1921. So this is basically a hundred, just about a hundred and one years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is about a hundred and one years ago, brothers and sisters, right? It's 2022. So 1921, right, GC. Now, let's just go to the bottom of it. So let's see. You see it's from, this is source right there from Gebra, Exiavia, Elias, Elias, right? Um, Radolf K. Um, Molvaya, Molvaya. And the book document is called Prowess, Piety, and Politics. And it's from page 415. Now, why I like to share this one with you is when I mentioned the Frey Kanafe, right, the fruit of the lips, the Ethiopian official, we say, um, government of the King of Kings document that has the um, word sound, the speeches of His Majesty of Kadamawi Hala Selassie in the Amharic. Some of them have been translated into English. We have it in Selected Speeches also. Brothers and sisters that want to get a copy of Selected Speeches, we have it at LOJS. Dot org that's l o j s lion of judah society l o j s dot o r g that's the hard copy you know a hard copy of the document as well selected speeches but when we read this right here this reminds me of what we read in the amharic and in in the in the frey kanafer 
and there was more of that. So what the Frey Kanafir has is uh, what His Majesty Nagusin Nagas, the King of Kings, said on various occasions. What others came to him and presented or said, and what his response to them was. All right. So this is what the document has over the nearly um, 40, right, 40 years, right? And some of the readings, I thought I was reading like biblical, prophetic, you know, prophecy because it was speaking to the king and of the king, right, in the official government, you say, in the official government scene in prophetic and biblical right language and prophetic language we're going to bring it forward you know we're going to show that exhibit you know show the receipts so to speak but here's a receipt right here from 1921 right 19 now remember 1921 would have been nine years before the coronation of rastafari katamawi hala selassie nagus rastafari katamawi hala selassie right so here it says right here hala selassie Mm -hmm. Haile Selassie, because remember, like, like when we say 1921, the Ethiopian year, right, would be um, seven years, seven to eight years less, right? You know what I'm saying? The Ethiopian year would be seven to eight years less, just so you understand, like, the whole GC thing. Here it says Haile Selassie is a gospel. Remember we just showed you about the gospel? A gospel that can save all. Now, I have some footnotes here, right? But let's just go through this right here. Halas Selassie, power of the Trinity is a gospel that can save all. Troubled mankind will capture or, bringing out them hard sense, receive you with love. And your saber, the saber, old time word for sword, and your saber is called judge. Everywhere there is war. Look, this is before the war speech, as Madsy would give in like, what, 1960. 63, I think he gave it in two places in the United States, on two coasts. His Majesty gave that particular speech, war speech, on two coasts, right? He gave it on the East Coast, right, at the United Nations, and the West Coast at Stanford University. Did you know that? Did you know that His Majesty gave the war speech, that part of the speech he repeated, right? And your saber is called judge. Everywhere there is war, cutting or judging between, because in them Amharic, um, one of the words for like, um, you know, um, cutting, cutting could be judging in a sense that actually like, you know, like, like, for example, karakar, karakar, right? Like almost like to argue, but literally it means almost like to cut. You know, you, so like going through a kind of a judging or weighing, you're trying to cut away all the miscellaneous thing and get to the real root core thing, cutting, judging between all small and great, hala salasi, bunch of grapes. You give happiness without end. Limit to those who merely see you, not only to let alone those who are close to you. And also the God of all gave you to us to rule us day by day. And it's say by day and by night, but day by day, understanding now the spiritual implication for the word day. It is better to trust you than to trust the nobles. Right? And that was proven by historical fact. Ras to Farai versus the Rasas. So even here where we have to versus some of the so-called Rastas, the same thing we learned and we seen of our father. It is better to trust you than to trust the nobles. And your thunderous or awesome name, the name, the Hashem, Samu, right, was heard throughout the universe. To whoever begs of you, you will reign the reign of mercy, your generosity. Now, right here, 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 here's the footer. Just to understand the footer right here. Remember the first one, 432? Haile Selassie was Teferi, Teferi, or we say now Tefari's baptismal name, meaning, quote, power of the Trinity. Both the literal meaning and Teferi, are implied in the words. That's interesting. Because so I looked over, I said, wait, that's 1921. But here it says that that Hala Selassie was Teferi. So no doubt maybe when it was originally it was Teferi, but referring to the same, we say entity, right? Teferi and Hala Selassie, both the literal meaning, power of the Trinity, right? The one to be reverenced, right? The one to be respected. The power of the Trinity implied in the words. The next one was literally covenant or solemn promise 
between God and man and between marriage partners. Now, those who understand the prophetic implications of this by studying Torah, right, when it says to capture or receive you with love, right? So looking at the footnotes right here, right? Next one, um, the 434, the 434, I have a hard copy right here. Let's just get the hard copy right here. The 434, it says this refers literally, right, to the parts of the body, but it means that he judges everyone justly. So when it says the small and the great, right, the small and the, those who are the small and the great, everybody, the big people and the little people, but also the small and the great things pertaining to the body, right, pertaining to the body, right, just as a Messiah king, right, as a king upon the throne of David, according to HaTorah, the Orit, right, even of Moses is supposed to do. Right? Then the next one is 435, where it says a reference to give us this day our daily bread. Right? So this part right here is where it says right here, and also the God of all gave you to us to rule us day by day. So the day by day is give us this day our daily bread. That's in the um the Abuna, Abuna, our father, Abuna, right? Abuna. Zebes Samayat, our Father one in heaven, or in the Hebrew, Abinu Sheba Shemayi, the Paternoster, our Father. It says, through Tafari, this is the note right here, you see it, through Tafari, Teferi, God, Exiavir, will provide. Now, you know, Exiavir will pro provide, Exiavir Yazagajal, Exiavir Yayal, corresponds to Yahuwah Yireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Iri. Jehovah Jireh, that he will see to it, he will provide. The next note we have, right, the last note is where it says, and your thunderous, awesome name was heard throughout the universe. See, and this is the key. Remember, as it says in, in, um, in, in Matthew, in Matthew, it talked about as the lightning shined from the east to the west. And your thunderous, awesome name was heard throughout the universe. Now, we know that thunder and the lightning does travel right across the heavens from region to region. So his name would be the same. And that, that name was heard over here in the West, in the Americas. Yes, it was heard up here. Right? Rastafari, in principle, was here in the Americas. Rastafari, in, in, in you could say, in the form and the way that we get to know it, from Jamaica, from Benjamin, yes, but all of us out here, our ancestors heard it. Reverend James Morris Webb for I and I up here. Marcus Garvey got to hear that message when he was here in the wilderness. When he went back to Jamaica, he proclaimed it there. The Rastaman, the Rastafari, they picked up on that message. That generation, that righteous generation picked up on it. See, our, our, um, how can we say this? Our contention, Right, our contention and our contending, right, earnestly, you know, for the faith that was once delivered is not speaking about that generation. That generation had it right and exact. We can point to that generation and see that generation keeping it in spirit and in truth the teaching of His Majesty. But here, the last part right here, when it's about universe, literally all the worlds, according to Ethiopian tradition. Exiavia, the sustainer, Elohim created 12 worlds, of which three are inhabited, right? Behere uh, Hiwan, Hiwan, the biggest, right? Behere Bizuhan, right? The land of the blessed and this earth, the smallest, and the world of the dead that is divided into Genet, like the garden. Remember when Yeshua said, you'll be with me in paradise? Paradise is the garden. Right, the Genet or the Gan in the Hebrews, Gan in the Amharic is Genet, Ganet, Genet, Ganna. Right, it's Ganna Garden, interesting, which is paradise or literally the garden. Then we have Sheol, Sheol, you see that even in some places in the Bible, Sheol, right, and then we have the Gehanim, right, Gehinom or Gehinom in the Hebrew, Gehanim, right, which is referred to as hell, but it's really the fireplace. That's where um, a Gehinom was where in old Jerusalem they used to throw their garbage and burn the trash. 
So that was synonymous with the wicked would be burnt up like the garbage. That was the, the gen, right? The gen of Hinom, right? The valley, the ge Hinom, ge Hinom, right? Of a man named Hinom. So this is where that name Gehenno. And this is now um, conceived as the eternal place for eternal punishment for Akas. So I'm, I'm pointing this one out right here because I'm showing you this is what the Ethiopians thought. So I remember we were looking at something, right? That was another video that we wanted to do right there. Right? Well, let, let's just show right here. That was the basement down there. Yeah. Black people, why do you allow failures, fools, and frauds become community leaders? Thought um, Tommy's title there was interesting. Right? Why do we allow failures, fools, and frauds to become the community leaders? Hit the link. Right? Or even the social media leaders. Right? You know what I mean? You see what really gets the hits, you know, nowadays by and large. You know, some quality stuff gets a lot of hits too, but then there's a lot of garbage out there that really gets a lot of hits. You know, and people spend time on that garbage in, garbage out. Let's go to the next one right here. The next one right here. Let's look at this one right here. Now, this is um, Muedes, what's called Muedes. Muedes from the Ethiopic, like praise. Here we have a praise poem, Muedes, Muedes, right? Muedes to the crown prince, right? Ras Teferi Mekonen, or a.k.a. Kadamawi Hala Selassie. You see, this is by Deptra um, Kifle Medin, right? Ye Sedalu, Ye Sedalu. Right. Check this out right here, brothers and sisters. Right. So this is like prayer and praise. Right. Prayer and praise to the crown prince Rastafari Mekonen or Rastafari Mekonen. Right. Here it says your honor is like the kingdom of heaven, starting like a mustard seed. Right. You see that right there? Starting like a what? A mustard seed. As it is prophesied and seen in visions and said in parables, and you are greater than other plants of the kingdom, and all who come to you find shelter in the tree. The power of the Trinity, Hila Selassie, is the plant of truth. He who always waters you like a tree is the dew of the mercy of the world. Right? And this brings out the sense of Christos, of Christ. Remember, these here were written back in the 20s, the 1920s. Right? And we have furthermore from even the 30s. This is from the Ethiopian side of the ledger. So in the Royal Canada train interview of His Majesty, where a lot of people get bent out of shape because they don't understand what His Majesty is talking about, and they're lying, saying His Majesty denied being Christ, he denied his divinity, he denied... No, he denied emanation philosophy. But now we show you what was said of His Majesty, and no doubt, John Hoy knew this, right? This was known, like we said, in the... In the Frey Kanafer, the, the Ethiopic book. I'll take a snapshot of it like this, go through it and seek to present a presentation on it, right? But it has not been translated, right? So far, we haven't seen it in translation, although some of the other speeches have been translated, like in selected speeches or important utterances or elsewhere. But let's go on right here. It says, he who always waters you like a tree is the dew of the mercy of the word. Christ. False martyrs, look what it says right here, false martyrs and exploiters will fear before your face. And I submit to you that certain ones, you know, wolves in sheep clothing have sought to do the same thing, right? And see, others will qualify somebody being a wolf or a sheep or this or that subjectively. We're looking objectively. Why the objective perspective here? And we say the objective perspective based on the teaching of his majesty. So as the sword can cut you, right? Because it's double edged, it can cut me too. You know what I'm saying? This, this is how you have to operate. But ones and ones who are about the fake and not about the true faith can't do that. They dismiss the whole thing because they know they got cut, right? False martyrs and exploiters will fear before your face. The enemy advice of Jezebel fell from its throne. Chan. Fell from its throne. From then on, when you become king, the kingdom 
is a kingdom of mercy and forgiveness because you arrested the evil one so that he is like a dead man. This is interesting because there's a prophecy that says after the appearance of Christ and a temporary manifestation of the kingdom as a template type, like the tabernacle template type, that after that, some see the prophecy about like Satan being released, right? But he was under arrest. This is this verse right here connects where it says you arrested the evil one in this prayer and praise to Ras to Farai Mekonan. This also links with um what is said in Thessalonians, right? He who letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. So when they sought to take him out of the way because he had proven in his times. Why he shall shoot, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings, the Lord, Lord, yes, I, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Because you arrested the evil one so that he is like a dead man. All right now, notice the footnotes here. You see the footnotes here? What are the footnotes referring to? Mm, the footnotes referring to the Bible. All right? Right, the, the Bible. Now, the first one, the first one, it was says, your honor is like the kingdom of heaven, starting like a mustard seed. This is referring to Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Isn't this interesting? Because does not Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, does not he say that the parables, remember the parables, when the disciples were a little bit, um, kind of a little out of shape a little bit when Christ was telling the parables to like the multitude, those who wasn't disciples, just a crowd of people, right? You know, like the difference between those who are really Rastafari in Jamaica and other Jamaicans who may be Rasta curious or Rasta friendly or Rasta supporters, you know, or Rasta bandwagon riders or any of that. You know, they may be into the accessories, you know, but not into the necessities if you over. So here we have Matthew chapter 30, 13, 13, verse 31. Right, the parable. So if you read, go over Matthew chapter 13, and you'll see that what Yeshua is saying here. Remember, Yeshua presents himself, Jesus Christos, as I'm the son of my father, I'm the word made flesh, and I'm preparing you, right, for my return. But my return really is my return in the spirit of the father, right, when he shall come forward. And this is what we see with the second advent. Right, or the coming of the man child that was born there in the Jasagora, Ethiopia, as it says in Psalm 87, verse 4. Right, with Ethiopia, right, this man was born there. The next part it says, as it is prophesied and seen in visions and said in parables. So here the next line reinforces what we're reading up here is a top, just for ones and ones. So ones can see, you know. We can do it like this right here so you can see this up here. So here for 461, it says great events were heralded through prophecies and visions in the Bible. So it is also with the coming to power, right, or that you say authorization, right, of Hala Selassie, right, where it says um, Yahuwah by Malak, right, this is the Hebrew, right, Yahuwah Malak. Right? And it was, Jehovah has become king. Je when we say Jehovah reign, you know the psalm that says Jehovah reign? Actually, that can be translated from the Hebrew as, he has become king. He has been coronated. Check? Check. Next, it says, and you are greater than other plants of the kingdom. Here it points to Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Next verse, it says, the power of the Trinity, Hala Selassie, is the plant of truth, right? Is the plant of, did we skip one? No, the, the, okay. All who come to you, right? All who come to you find shelter in the tree. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. The next line, the power of the Trinity, Hala Selassie, is the plant of truth. This also, the footnote is Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Right. Next verse, it says, he who always waters you like a tree is the dew of the mercy of the word. And then in brackets, it says Christ here. The footnote right here is John chapter 15, verse one. False martyrs and exploiters will fear before your face. The enemy advice of Jezebel. Uh oh, Jezebel, Elzebel, Elzebel. 
Elizabeth, divine, or is that uh, Jezebel fell from its throne, 466. Now here we have 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 15, and 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30 to verse 33. All right, now we're going to check out these verses, but let's go through the right here, here, here. And we have two more, two more. It says, from then on, when you become king, the kingdom is a kingdom of mercy and forgiveness because you arrested the evil one. Now here it says this refers to Lij Yasu. Lij Yasu. Mm. This refers to Lij Yasu, right, who wanted to confound the Judeo Christian roots, our royal order, the Ethiopian Hebrew, with Mohammedanism. Right? The Mohammedans, you know, the Muslim Muslims, they have a right to, you know, dwell in the land, sense the Sahaba, so be it. But the kingdom, the establishment of the kingdom must be upon its true foundations. Right? Because you arrested the evil one. So here the app is to Lij Yasu. Right? But it's not limited. Let me say this. It's not limited to Lij Yasu. So that he is like a dead man. And here it points to Psalm 89 verse 10. And it puts a note that in the Gutter's Bible down here. You see right here. In the Gutter's Bible to show why we emphasize sometime on the podcast the difference in the daily psalms, the Davidic worship, the numbering sometime. You can see that in the Gutter's Bible, it's actually Psalm 88 and 10 because the ancient numbering, right? So this also written by Debtara, right? Debtara. Like the Debtara, I only heard basically good things about them from the historical times. Now I hear a lot of bad things about them nowadays, so what are we to accept or trust, basically? We trust the teaching of his majesty. We trust the testimony, right, of the blameless Ethiopians. And when we say blameless Ethiopians, we're not talking about today. We're talking about from the time of Moses, Solomon, and Sheba. Let's say Solomon and Sheba, right, to this present time right here, here, here. Right? The Ethiopians live it up, live it out. Let's look at this one right here. Now, notice this one right here. This is Moedis again. Again, we have Moedis. Moedis, the Ethiopic term for um, praise poem to crown Prince Rastafari Mekonan, written by Aleka um, Sertsu, either Sertsu or Sertsu, right? On the 8th of September, 1924, on the feast of St. Raphael, right? St. Raphael. Some would maybe like in Raphael, but it said as Raphael, right? So here, 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 just to seal up with this. Now, this is what was amongst the Ethiopians concerning Lij Tafari, Ras Tafari, Kadamawi, Halasalai. This is a part of it, right? So you can clearly see the messianic divinity, right? We can say the godliness, the godlikeness. Right here, here, here. So get off of that Rasta make Selassie God, whatever. No, Rasta say Selassie God. Right? Rasta say. Rasta no Rasta make Selassie God. Rasta only say so. Right? Because those who receive the spirit and the truth from the previous generation. We're talking about the first time. We're talking about the first proclaimers of Rastafari. We're going back like to the 20s and 30s. Check both in the Americas and the Caribbean, particularly in Jamaica, right? Jaman, Benjamin. But here, by Aleka, Aleka, Sertsu, right here, everyone directs his steps to the place of hope where he hopes to get something good. Let your running word, which is order, reach the highest, most important markets. May your word have no limits. Let it be like Eeyore. The third of the seven heavens, may it reach far, not like the false and wicked word order of David through Dan concerning Bathsheba. Hmm, interesting, right? Haile Selassie, i.e. Teferi, because this time known as Teferi, right? But when, they, when the revelation of the coronation and all that came about, one's revisited you know, what they had said early. You know, you make a prophecy or someone make a prophecy, then after it comes to pass, right? Hala Selassie, Teferi, you are the house of the Holy Spirit, right? Tzirha Tzion. Tzirha 
Zion, right? Shining wisdom like the sun abides in your heart as it did in Gibeon, right? In Gibeon, army, no, that's Gideon, but Gibeon, right? And my mind is like islands, the islands during bad times when there is drought, right? Or drought in that sense. Then I hope that when hope has gone, you will be like the rod of Aaron. Come on now. The rod of who? The rod of Aaron. For with a silent, trusting heart, I shall remember it. The prophecy that he would be emperor, or Ethiopically speaking, we don't really have the word emperor. We have Negusa Neges. Negusa. In the West, in bad English, we say um, um, Negusa Nagas, but actually it's Negusa Neges. Right? He would be king of kings. When you return from Babylon, look, 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 brothers and sisters, become Negusa Neges after that tour of Europe and other places in the world. Let your news be like the news of Rahab. <laughs> now, notice what we have right here, here, here. Right? The news of Rahab. Right? The news of Rahab. Now, that's speaking about Joshua. Right? Joshua chapter 2, verse 12. Right? Joshua chapter 2, verse 12. Let's take it from the top right here, here, here. So this is from, we showed you one from 19, right, 1921. Here's from 1924. When was Negus, Rastafari, coronated, anointed as Karamawi Hala Selassie, Messiah as Karamawi Hala Selassie upon the throne of great King David? That was November 2nd, 1930. So we have 1930 and we have these earlier dates right here. So this was prior to, right, prior to. So there was already this reception of the divinity, right? How this man, this man, this man was born there as Psalm 87 verse 4 so says. So what's up with some of these Rasta them? Right, that them don't can't see it very clearly right here, here, here. Maybe some of the elders didn't have access to this, but at least they had access to the spirit and they maintained the right teaching that his majesty right, is the black Messiah. Right? He is that Messiah. We are the children of Israel over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. That was the first word that we heard proclaimed concerning Rastafari, that we are the Israelites. And because we broke the covenant, we ended up under the captivity, under the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the Gentiles, and under this system of things. Right, And that his majesty is our kinsman redeemer according to the scripture. Why right? this man was born there. This is why Reverend James Morris Webb, before Garvey said what he said, he said, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him you will find the Redeemer. Right? The same man who wrote uh, the um the black man, right? You know, the black man, what's that book right there? Um, Civilization. We're gonna show you that hopefully before we get through this right here. This is a little bit full of full, but let's go through this right here. Everyone. Everyone directs his steps to the place of hope where he hopes to get something good. Let your running word or order reach the highest, most important markets. May your word have no limits. Let it be like Eeyore. Right? So now the first quote that we have right here, the archangel Raphael is said to rule in the third heaven. So what's known as Eeyore, Hebraically speaking, right? The Eeyore is where the archangel Raphael is said to rule by right, in the third heaven, the third of the seven heavens. May it reach far. May may your word have no limits. So it's saying, may the word of Kedemawi Hala Salasi Nagusa Negesa Ethiopia Moa Anbesa Zem Negeti Yehuda have no limits. May it reach far, even as far as the third heaven. Not like the false and wicked word. It says the order of David through Don concerning Bathsheba. Now here it has a note that says 2 Samuel 11, 2 to 27. In Ethiopia, they say that David's messenger was called Don, was called Dan or Don. Right? So in Ethiopia and among the, no doubt, the Israelites of Ethiopia, they said that Dawit's messenger was called Don. 
And no doubt, the messenger might have been called Don because remember the 1,000 that came from each of the 12 tribes, the 12,000 with Eben Hakim, Baina Lechem, with Dagmawi Dawit, with the son of the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, and of King Solomon of Yisrael. Yes, so he is called Don, that the son of Jacob advising his brothers to kill Joseph also was said to be Don. And it is said by the Israelites of Ethiopia that Yehuda Ishkariot, or Judas Iscariot, was out of the tribe of Dan. So it's also said that he was of the tribe of Dan. So he is making this link, particular peculiar link with Dan right here in this mawadis, in this praise and prayer of Rastafari Mekonan. Remember, when we say Rastafari Mekonan, this is all prior to and before. Right for at least about about maybe what is it, about sixteen about sixteen years, right? And he was known as Rastafari Mekonan for at least about sixteen years, right? So in this period of time leading up to the coronation and the, the anointing, the anointing and the coronation, we want to emphasize the anointing because when you read and check out the um, gotta read and check out the liturgy book, Hail of Ras Ayarit. Yes, I. So, Hala Selassie, Tafari, you are the house of the Holy Spirit, the Tzirha Tzion. Right? So, here, Ethiopians say that the house where the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Kedus, descended on the disciples was called Tzirha Tzion and belonged to Maryam, to Mary, the Mary who was the mother of the, the, the Mary that was the mother of Caduce Marco, of Caduce Marco, of St. Mark, right? The Wengelawi, the evangelist. So that's that note right there that the upper room, you know, where the Holy Spirit came down, according to the teaching of the true church, the church of he who had the key of great King David is called Sirha Siyom, right? To the next note. Right, shining wisdom like the sun abides in your heart as it did in Gibeon. So here we have the 549 note and it references Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. All right, then no, 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 let's get the and my mind is like islands, and my mind is like islands during bad times or then times when there is drought. Interesting, the islands connection because the prophet says, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah says that, and the isles will wait for thy law. That connection even with the light coming from the east, shining here in the west, this north country, the Americas, but also in the Caribbean, in Ben Jaman, Jaman, Yaman, in the Isle of Jamaica. So here, then, I hope that when hope has gone, you will be like the rod of Aaron, a powerful verse. If you over the scripture, see, a lot of people may not really get the connection because they might not have, have really um, well understood what the Torah says. This is why we say discipleship studies, y'all. The discipleship studies is very, very important because then when you recognize the significance of rod of Aaron, two things I think you'll recognize. you recognize, first of all, that the Ethiopians from such a time, right? The Israelites of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Hebrews, that royal order from such a time, was so well acquainted with the scriptures, right? That some things, even if you're a going to church on Sundays, Christian, you might not understand the significance of these things because they only give you a verse here, a verse there, a little versicle, you know, and then you give your money and then you go home, but you don't really get the roots. That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved. So here, the rod of Aaron the connection here is that Aaron's rod, it bloomed and bore fruit, even though it was kind of cut off from its source, like from like, like a rod, you know, like you would not expect to like if I have a, a, I have a, I have a staff and this staff was a part of a tree, right? That was growing. You don't expect the tree to still grow or bloom or blossom, right? That's why it says, then I hope that when hope has gone, Right, the one who wrote this right here, this particular Moedis, right, th this praise says that I hope that when hope has gone, you will be like the rod of Aharon, the rod of Aaron, that Rastafari, right, Mekonan, Kadamawi, Halasalasi, the teaching and the truth of his majesty continues, right, to blossom among the called, chosen, and faithful. 
Rastafari. No abbreviation business here, right? Um, here, the last um, part of this for with a silent trusting heart, I shall remember it. You see the key? This is like scripture here. If you go through the Torah, the key word, the operative word, like remember the Shabbat and keep it set apart. Remember the Holy Day. Remember, remember my commandments. Remember, rem call it to mind. Don't be forgetful, right? Don't be forgetful, forgetful, right? For with a silent, trusting heart, I shall remember it. The prophecy that he would be Nagusa Nagas, king of kings. So you see in the translation, whenever you see a translation come from the Ethiopic and it says emperor, know this, that in the Amharic, nine times out of 10, more times 10 out of 10, it will be Nagusa Nagas. It will be literally king of kings. Now, suppose you reread it like that. For with a silent, trusting heart, I shall remember it. What's the it? The prophecy that he, Ras Teferi Mekonen, would be Nagusa Nagas. This man was born there. Right, that prophecy, Psalm 87, verse 4. When you return from Babylon, right, become, it says, king of kings, right? Let your news be like the news to Rehab. To Rehab. Now, Rehab, remember, was Joshua? Joshua chapter 2, verse 12. So it's speaking about Joshua chapter 2, verse 12. So this is just a little brief. Right, this right here, just a little brief sampler, right? A little brief sampler right here, two, three pages, right? Of what the Ethiopians thought. This is why right here, right? Yeah, you know, the boiler, you see it over there. This is why, right? This is why when it says in that um, Canada train interview, we saw the Jamaica Gleaner. And I guess Muta Bali, Bila Eve, whatever Jamaica Gleaner say. So I think I guess a lot of people do. It happens that way, like even on social media. Please check this out. Accept what I'm saying as the truth. It is true, but find the truth for yourself. Go vet it for yourself. Because one thing you'll find is that when it says millions of Ethiopians, right, still, despite this clear declaration, millions of Ethiopians, notice the narrator went back to his original thing. He wasn't talking about Rastafarians. He wasn't talking about Rastafari. He was talking about Ethiopians and people around the world who are viewing his majesty as the reincarnation, so to speak. Reincarnation means again in the flesh. The spirit of Christ, of the Messiah, is again in the flesh, has returned, the return. This is what Yeshua, what he asks, what Jesus Christ speaks about in, in John's gospel chapters, I think 14, like to 16, right? If you read those, maybe 16, 17, if you go through those chapters right there, he's speaking about the second advent. That's why he tells the disciple that you'll see me, but not see me. And they say, what is this? So to see his majesty, right? To see his majesty, right? But when you see him, right? We see Christ, right? But Hala Selassie is not Jesus Christ. He is Hala Selassie. The person of the Father is the Father, right? The person of the Father is always Father, right? The person of the Son is always Son. And we recall this from the teaching, the Mystere um, Selassie, the mystery of the Trinity, one of the ancient Orthodox Tawahedo teachings. So it's actually the Tawahedo teaching if one can get it unvarnished, not watered down, you know, by some careless Ethiopian, but get it as it says it. If you can get it as it says it, you will recognize why ones and ones were writing these praise poems concerning Rastafari, Mekonen, Kanamawi, Hala Selassie, even way back then. So this proves that Rastafari or Rastas, see, see, a Rastafari sight and recognize and receives the divinity of his majesty. Now, how we receive this divinity, we have to make sure that it's according to the teaching of his majesty, which is the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. But to supplement our studies of the Bible, we also have the ancient teaching, those ancient manuscripts, everything from the Apocryphal to the Picryphal books, Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, Ethiopic Book of Enoch, Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. Yes, I'm mentioning a lot of books, but that's why the word says, even in the Bible, to study to show yourself approved. Think about it for a moment. The Bible tells us to study, encouraging study. Even the Messiah says to the other Yehudi or the Jews that he's speaking to, have you not read 
That means that literacy must be valued. And these are things that a lot of ones and ones in our community are sorely lacking, right? Are sorely lacking to the point that even a lot of the elders have actually kind of like, you know, bun bridges. They bun out a lot of things, right? They were, they were over too zealous, right? And instead of acknowledging these things, even ones want to question the Sabbath, want to question some of the principles, want to question an organization like the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, which is massively established for us, right? But the same um, trials and tribulation that happens even in an organization that has a glorious beginning and history and and past testimony. You know, we're going through some choppy waters, you know, some trials and tribulations, even seeking to work things out, even right now, right here. You know, we've been duly elected, right? And a, a committee has been duly elected for a new year. More to come on that. Check out Ethiopian World Federation dot org. I think we put it in the links before. We'll try to put in the links again so ones and ones can link there. The rightful organization of the membership, right? The membership that has studied <laughs> to shoot themselves approved. You know what I mean? A lot of ones who are coming forward have a lot of zeal. We give thanks for your zeal, right? But everything must be put in, you know, good order, right? Good order. Let's share a, a quick, a quick one or two right here. Right, because, you know, we could probably go into this a little bit more, but we've already been here for a while. What's the teaching of His Majesty? You must always remember. Again, remember. Get it? Remember. Call it to mind. Remember. Don't be forgetful. Right? You must always remember that to lead, one must first learn to follow. To lead. Now, you hear some mind of mine, you know, and sadly, even some olders, who some might refer to as elders, might be their elder, respectfully speaking, kind of putting down such things. You know, putting down like, oh, oh, the only leader we have is his majesty. Well, I'll say the first and foremost, the first and foremost, as we say, Haile Selassie the first, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, first and foremost. And his majesty's teaching says, you must always remember that to lead, one must first learn to follow. Man, man say, me not follow anybody, me not follow, me not follow, and go into their rhetoric, their patois rhetoric, right? But it doesn't take away from the teaching of his majesty. So if I didn't know anything about Rastafari, or I was Rasta curious, whether you're Rasta curious, Right, your Rasta, Rasta supporter, or whether you are truly called children of faithful, fullness, Rasta Farai. Right? right? That if I didn't know, right, I'm just Rasta curious. Nothing wrong. I actually prefer some of the Rasta curious individuals, right, are a little bit better, right, in the light of his majesty than those when they say, Well, them Rasta, right? When them Rasta. But when them Rasta, when the Rasta curious, they still had a regard and a reverence. Once they think they got it, they don't got nothing, right? Because you'll see that they begin to contradict the teaching of his majesty, right? And even if we're still learning and growing, right? When someone comes to you with this right here, that his majesty says that one must learn to follow. So ask some ones and ones that say them Rasta and Rastafari, ask them who you follow, See, and the reason why people say, me not follow nobody, right, or no one, whether a body body or one one, right, whether they say this or that, as a Rastafari, does his majesty not say, you must always remember that to lead, one must first learn to follow? And we said you. People say, well, the, the I, the I. No, that's, that's a part of it there. Right, uh, too much, too much over individualism, ism, schism. Every man and man and everyone gonna see a different way instead of seeing it the teaching of His Majesty. He said one must first learn to follow, and by emphasizing here to follow, we're saying to follow the teaching of first of all to learn to study to learn the teaching of His Majesty, and then to follow the teaching of His Majesty. And anybody who learns and studies and gets to know and lives and you know, does the teaching of his majesty, I would follow them. I might not follow them because following them is like following following his majesty, like following myself because they have studied, they have learned, they have learned to live it, right? And because they regard his majesty first, 
right? If they are one who is better able to handle something, this that's blessed. This, this is this is what you call um, um, brotherly love. <laughs> People talk this talk. Right? It says, love your brother, love your sister, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The problem is people talk that love, 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 love stuff. But here's the problem. The problem is they don't have very much love for themselves. They're trying to love everything, love everybody, but don't even love themselves. Remember the master said, you know, Robeno, our rabbi, rabbi, rabbis, the memherachin, Jesus Christos, he said. You know what I mean? I mean, what did he say? Right? You know what I mean? What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? Right, what did he say? Right, love one another, right, as he has loved us. Right, and then the scripture also tells us to love our neighbor, right, as we love ourselves. So, if you see a neighbor being unloving to his fellow neighbor, you might say, Hey, neighbor, be more loving to your neighbor. The problem might be that that neighbor don't have very much love for themselves. So, how can they give something they don't got? You got it? Right. Peace demands the united efforts of us all. Who can foresee what spark might ignite the fuse? I think a fuse has been lit, right? It's lit, right? And it's bound to get lit, right? Because these things we got to clear out. Remember, the judgment must come first to the house, right, of Jah, right? To the house of Jah, Rastafari, to the house of Kenamahas, to I and I, right? To the house of I and I, Godfather, and king of kings. You know what I mean? Because even this whole conception of God, who God is, what God is, is sadly and sorely, you know, mistaken, right? From this Western, right? We have a we have a white man's view of God in, in, in a bad translation. Right? But this book right here, you need to get a copy of it, the Sarate Nix Nigis, right? The Order of the Coronation. Need to get a copy of this document right here, The Order of the Coronation. Just a zoom in right here. It's the first English translation of the original Amharic and Gutt's text of the liturgy and the program for the coronation of his Imperial Majesty Khalid Selassie on the 2nd of November 1930. It's very, very important right here. Farai puts this one out right here. This literary text appeared by the government of Ethiopia for the coronation of the king of kings of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I, appears here in a fully annotated English translation of the original Amharic and Gutas, providing many historical details of the solemn event, while also offering up several mystical meditations regarding this moment of such prophetic proportions. Now, this particular a work like this, the ancestors, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, they longed for, they desired. You know, now we have more access to information as Daniel's prophecy states, they shall go to and fro, modulation, demodulation, and knowledge can increase. You can know about things instantly halfway around the world, right? The ancestors were looking for documents like this. And even though they didn't have documents like this from their best meditation, meditation, and reasonments, from that, we say, from that those righteous generations of Rastafari. When things really started to change, it was roughly after like the martyrdom dramatically changed, right? After the martyrdom of ones like Burhana Selassie, Bar Mali, and Peter Tosh on the September 11th, his martyrdom on the September 11th. And when we come into like the period of like, you know, the, the 80s, but moreover, like the late, the mid to late 80s and the 90s. But definitely it started when Ronald Wilson Reagan 666 came to office. After that, we get the, the Bob Marley concert at the, in the Whalers at Madison Square Garden. We hear about him collapsing, you know, when he either was jogging or something like that. And the next thing we find out, you know, that he has been martyred, you know. He has, he's a true martyr. We hear too much about these false other people martyrs. And when's the last time we heard deaf to black and white down presses? When last time you heard Rastafari speak about that? This is another eye trait right here from this document. I don't know if you've seen this. You know, Ethiopia stretching forth her hands to God right here. Right? This is some of the artwork. And we need to study this artwork. What does it mean? Chabarim. Here is Psalm 30, 68, Psalm 68, verse 31, right? The Ethiopic, the good is, is Psalm 67, verse 34. There's a slight numbering, 
you know, slight numbering difference. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands to, right, at Gaziavi here, to sustain her, the good, the generous Ab, right? Ethiopia shall stretch out her hands. So you see even right here in the symbology, right, the hands here are being stretched to his majesty. Now, what's interesting, if you look at some of the other related artwork that has some of the similar motif and symbolism, it's usually Ethiopia as that, you know, um, this the uh, Mariam, like that kind of Mary, Virgin Mary kind of figure stretching up her hands, stretching up her hands to, to like God in the heavens. Here you can clearly see Ethiopia stretching the queen, right? Ethiopia, like almost like Mariam, Ethiopia stretching forth her hands to his majesty right here. You see the dove, you see the eye. Right, you see the I, yes, I. Right now, remember this is going back to the 1930s and before. The I is a very popular symbology that's used in ancient Ethiopian and Judeo-Christian artwork for a long, 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 long time. So don't even try to come with that latter-day pseudo Illuminati counterfeit, you know, the counterfeit conspiracy. Right, we're talking about the real. Right, so here you see the dove is shining, notice that the dove is shining, right, that light, right, in light of what we have just said elsewhere. So even this basically right here is reaffirming, right, what we have down here in the footer, right, it's once again reaffirming the same idea, right, so in order to really understand how the blameless Ethiopians receive the divinity, right, the blameless Ethiopians receive the the messiahship, why? Right? Because the messiahship is a part of that coronation, that rite, that ritual from the Israelites of Ethiopia and the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, a part of an ancient rite of, of coronating kings, right? So the claims, right, that Judeo Christian Ethiopia have, have made are right and accurate. People try to fight it, they try to dismiss it, whether it's black people, whether it's some of the other Israelites of some of the other camps out there, some of the other Hebrew Israelites. We, we're Ethiopian Hebrew. We're, we're the royal order of the, the proper name is the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. What order are we? The royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. I, after the order of Melchizedek, the Lion of Judah, Society of His Majesty. So here, 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 once again, no Rasta. <laughs> no Rasta makes Selassie I God. Only Rasta say so. Only Rasta say so. Rasta say so. It's like, I see the tree right there. I didn't create the tree. I didn't even plant the tree. Right? But I declare, it's a tree. I didn't make the tree the tree. The tree be what the tree be. And his majesty be, he be who he be. Hakadosh Baruchu Baruch Hashem. Yes, I, Rastafari. So, look more, my brothers and sisters, right here, here, here. Yes, I. Check the description. Check the description. Also, the podcast as well.